Casey and Kaylin, and we are Triple K Art Studio. We have been talking about Mother's Day. Mother's Day is coming up, so we're going to do another fun Mother's Day lesson, but today we're making a lesson for Mimi. So if she can't see this video yet. So don't tell her. Do not tell her. No, don't no, no. tell Mimi. No, no, or do not let her see this video. Okay, the materials that you're going to need today, we're going to need some paint. And since I'm an art teacher, I usually mix the colors. So I have the three primary colors, which are what, Kaylin? Red, blue, and yellow. And I also have white, so we can make some pastels. We're gonna make some tints of these colors. And then you're going to need some sort of background. We found some of these really handy dandy canvas boards that we're going to use for our background. But you know what works just fine? A cereal box. If you cut out that rectangle on the back of a cereal box, it would be perfect for this lesson. We're going to use these canvas boards though because I found them and they used up. So we're going to use this as our background. You're also going to need a paintbrush, something to mix paint on. You will need some scissors and a glue stick. And then towards the end, we are going to make little stems for flowers. Wow, that's impressive. And towards the end of the lesson, we're going to need some sort of stem for flowers. We can either make them or we can use something we find around the house. I found these really cute little straws. They're made out of cardboard. So we're going to try to utilize these in our collage that we are going to make. We're going to make a bouquet of flowers and it is going to incorporate the grandchildren's handprints and footprints and possibly my handprint if we have room. So let's get started. The first step is to decorate your background. So if you have a piece of cardboard, you will paint over the cardboard. We're going to paint over this canvas. So we're going to pick a color and we're going to paint the whole entire background. I have decided to make my background a very light peachy color. So I'm going to mix together red and yellow to make orange and then I'm going to add that orange to the white to make that peach. So I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red, mix them together. So I can get a nice bright orange. And then I'm going to add some of that orange to my white. Hey, 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 no. Okay. Let's see what I think. Oh, I like that. I like it. So I'm going to quickly paint the whole entire background of my canvas. And then, Kaylin, what color would you like your background to your canvas to be? Pink. Oh no. Pink. It's okay. So you want your background to be pink? Wait. Wait. So Kaylin, how are we going to make pink? Mix red and red. I mean mix red and white. Yeah, we're going to mix red and white together okay. to get pink. I'm getting it. Why did you paint? You can paint on your canvas like that now. steps with this lesson, once we get our backgrounds painted, we, I'm going to paint Kaylin's hands and her feet and we're going to print them onto white paper. So you are going to need some white paper. This is just computer paper. Construction paper works as well. 
We are going to print both hands and both feet. I'm going to do both of my daughters. Then we're going to allow those to dry, cut around them, glue them into a bouquet onto the background. We will cut and position stems and glue them to the flowers. Do you know what else is What? Go ahead, but you need to paint the whole background. After the stems are in place, we will make a vase out of my handprint, but it'll probably just be my fingers since our canvas boards are so small. But what I would like to do is I would, if it's for a grandmother, I would have the mother's handprint be the vase and the child's or children's hands and feet be the flowers and the bouquet. If you're doing this lesson for a mother, have the child's footprint be the vase and then they can have handprints be the bouquet, plus a couple of feet would look really cute as well. Right it out. It'll wash off. Mm -hmm. Is that not washable paint? Do you, do you... It might be staining the table forever. Oh my word. What are we gonna do? your brush you can talk to them so here's the wet oh it's so messy so here's what my background looks like okay. and it's very messy on my hands but that doesn't wash it so and our next step is going to be printing hands so if you guys want to do our video subscribe but we're still doing it on even if I said that okay Give us a thumbs up, but we're not done yet, okay? Even as I said that, we're still going, okay? So, here's my mom, and we are going to go on now. Good job. So now, the fun part. We're going to do some handprints while our background dries. Okay. Oh boy, this is the fun part, and it's the messy part. So we're going to place our canvas boards to the side. So I'm going to have Kaylin's handprints and footprints be different tints of green. Darks and lights will be fine. And on this canvas board we will have purple. So we're making two of them for two grandmas. We'll see how it goes. Look, it looks like I have a beard in the First thing I need to do is I need to make purple. We're going to do purple first and we're going to do your hands first, okay? So in order to make purple, I need to mix blue and red. So I'm going to just give myself an area of blue, an area of red, and then I am going to put some white on my plate so I can add white to the tint. And then I'm going to scoop up some of that purple that I just mixed. I'm going to add it to my white. I'm going to do both of her hand prints. I could probably fit both of her hands and both of her feet on the same paper. We're going to try. So we're going to turn the paper this way and you will put your hand down here, okay? So now I am going to use a paintbrush to paint her hand. A lot of people like to just stick their hand right in the paint, but I have learned that if you paint the hand, it actually covers a lot better. Ooh. What's that feel like? It tickles. Does it tickle? Yeah. It feels like, it feels like a, br a magical broom of a witch's brush brushing on my hand. A magical broom of a witch's brush? Are you saying I'm a witch? No. Can you believe that? No, I'm, you're not a witch. <laughs> it feels like it. Oh, just wait. All right, so once their hands covered in paint, have them position it where you want it on the paper and just press down. Don't let them move their fingers because then it won't look like a handprint. Now pick up. Perfect. So right there is Kaylin's handprint. Now don't touch anything. Give me your other hand. We're going to do the left hand now as well. Paint her left hand. Oh, I'm a wicked witch. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, I 
picture again, my pretty. <laughs> I'm painting my pretty hand. Pretend you said it will be. Pretend you are a witch. I'm a witch. It's going to stay on here forever, my pretty. <laughs> Alright. Push it right next to your other handprint. Press down, now lift up. Good. We got both handprints on the paper successfully. Now we're going to do the feet. But before that happens, Kaylin is going to have to go wash her hands. If it were Kilani, I would take a baby wipe and just wipe her hands off because they're so little, but this would take a lot of baby wipes. So Kaylin's going to go wash her hands and we'll be right back. Oh, oh there she is. <laughs> All right, now it's time to print the feet. Now it's time to print Kaylin's feet. And I don't think she's ever sat on a counter before because she was very surprised when I lifted her up and put her on the counter. I'm going to check and see if her feet will fit on this paper. Can you put your feet side by side here? Oh yeah, we've got plenty of room. So she's just going to have to make sure that she listens to mom, okay? And we're gonna put both of them on this paper. Here's the fun part. <laughs> what does it feel like? It looks like another witch's room. Okay, so now we are going to position her foot on the paper. Make sure you get the toes pressed down. Now lift it up. Perfect! And I mixed some more purple and I added a little bit more blue so we could have a nice plummy color. Um, how do I walk? Oh my goodness, I don't know. So this is where baby wipes come in handy. If not a wet paper towel. That way you can just quickly get her foot cleaned off. If not, you're going to have to carry your child into the bathtub so they can wash their feet. Forever. Oh. Forever. No, it is. 90s reference for you. Alright. If you know what movie that was from, put it in the comments and let me know. We had a little bit of a mess up on that one. Now, this is what happens when the foot moves while you're trying to print it, so we're going to have to use another paper and print it again. All right, so we're going to print Kaylin's foot one more time. Press, lift, perfecto. Okay, now that Kaylin's feet and hands have been printed, now we're ready for Kaylani. I'm, I'm gonna show you my, what my foot looks like. So we're going to do Lonnie's feet first. Is that tickle? going to stand her up and place her foot on the paper. <laughs> that, looks, that looks nothing like a footprint. No, it doesn't. <laughs> so I figured out that having a baby stand up is a complete failure, so we are going to just take the paper and press the paper on her foot. <laughs> Sure. That'll work. Third, third time's a charm, right? So after two complete fails, we're going to try one more time with Lonnie's right foot. Just going to press the... <laughs> there we go. That's good enough. We're going to take the baby wipe and wipe her foot off. <laughs> now time for the left foot. Good 
Good job. <laughs> as good as we're gonna get. It's a complete failure. I wouldn't say that. Okay, so now we're going to paint her hand, and this is going to be really something. What? <laughs> What's going on with your hand? Okay. Now I'm going to roll her on her side and hope that, hope that she undoes her hand. Lesson of us making a huge mess. All right, let's try your other hand, kiddo. when she's asleep. After you have compiled a whole pile of attempts to get baby handprints and footprints, five-year-old handprints and footprints work pretty well. What we're going to do now is we're going to cut them out and arrange them onto the background. So I left just a little bit of white around the edges, so that will be our first flower for our bouquet. And then we will arrange them and since my background is pretty small my flowers are going to hang over the edges somewhat which is fine with me my goal is to have two hands and two feet for each child so I will have eight flowers in the bouquet so I arranged the handprints and footprints and I printed my hand and I trimmed it and flipped it upside down to make a little vase. And I'm not too crazy about the white background. I think that this would look a lot better if it were on some sort of colored construction paper, but that's okay. And I wanted to stick with the complementary color scheme. I realize that orange and purple aren't direct complementary colors. However, yellow and purple are. And so I didn't really want to make blue flowers so I printed in purple. Since I'm going to have so many overlapping pieces on my small canvas, I went ahead and found a piece of cardboard and I glued the larger pieces that were going to be overlapping to the cardboard. I'm going to cut them out just to add a little bit more stability to the overall piece. Right now I'm adding just a little bit of chalk to the edges. And then I'm taking my finger and I'm blending it into the whole entire piece. I think that it just gives it a little bit more. I didn't really like the white background. I wish that I had printed these on construction paper, but I really like the effect that this chalk is giving these prints. So I'm going to finish adding chalk to these pieces and then I will add it to the smaller hands and feet. I cut out all of those pieces of cardboard. If you've ever cut cardboard with scissors, you know how hard it is. My hand's pretty sore. I suggest getting a cutting mat and an X-Acto knife if you plan on cutting a lot of cardboard. But I arrange them the way that I would like them to be placed on the composition. I did a little bit of overlapping with Keelani's hands and feet. So now time to add the stems. So I'm going to cut these little paper straws up right here. And I'm going to position them around the vase. And then I'm going to cut some leaves out of some green paper. 
Uh, you don't, if you don't have straws, you can draw them uh, with a marker or with a crown or with a piece of chalk, or you can roll up. Uh, you can roll up a piece of paper and make a straw, just like we did in our video demonstrating how to make the paper hyacinths. I wanted to go ahead and stick with the collars of the stems for the leaves. So I just took some white computer paper scraps left over from the footprints and I used some chalk pastels and I collared in some of the gold color that's on the stems and I added a brown vein to the center of the leaves and then I glued everything on with Elmer's glue. Now the last thing I'm going to do is place a piece of string on the back to mount it and then we will be done. I'm not sure why this photo turned out upside down, but you can see how I took a piece of yarn and I duct taped on both sides of the yarn. I stretched it out on the back. Uh, since this is such a light piece, duct tape will work perfectly. If you have a lot of weight, you might want to use something a little bit more sturdy, like a command strip or some sort of hook. The good thing about using string to hang artwork is it balances the piece out. So this is being hung on the wall using just a small nail. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and push the thumbs up button, but you don't push the down, thumbs down button. And, and subscribe for your channel. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Bye! Bye.